Hello fellow runners, time for a little bit of uh, practice to get ready to run around Vanuatu. 10 to 15 kilometres, 30 degree heat, 90% humidity, maybe 99%. It's going to be a big challenge uh, coming from a deep winter to tropical heat and to run those kinds of distances. It's very easy to prepare, even going from uh, a winter. I did this uh, very successfully uh, quite a few years back running the round Rarotonga road race 19 and a half miles uh, in the most stinking heat and that race I came second behind the current New Zealand marathon champion Graham Struthers it was a tough race because basically there was nothing at all for me to drink along the way um, in that race was also John Walker who ran it as a training run, he pulled out about halfway. Uh, I went on beautifully to get second place and that's one of my uh, all time greats. Now the reason why I did so well, I ran way above my station in life, is because I acclimatised from a Wellington winter going to tropical heat. Now let me explain how easy it is to do it. Basically what you do is you find yourself a uh, sauna and about three to four weeks before uh, you head off uh, offshore to those tropical uh, uh, shores. What you do is you go down to the sauna probably two to three times a week. And what you do is you choose a time. I used to go very early when they're just opening up the sauna before all of the regulars arrived. And I'd strip off and jog on the spot in the sauna. Uh, initially, what you do, here's the routine. What you do is, first of all, is you get yourself soaked from head to toe in lukewarm water. Then you go into the sauna and you jog on the spot and uh, do calisthenics, whatever you like. You can go completely crazy. And you do that until you start to sweat profusely and start to feel a little uncomfortable. You then exit the sauna and have a cold shower and soap your body, wash all your pores out, get rid of all the gunk and so on that may have accumulated over the last week or so and then you uh, go back into the sauna. This time you stay in the sauna exercising until you start to feel very uncomfortable uh, until your body uh, is broken out into a full sweat and then you go out and have the coldest plunge you can have or the coldest shower and you stay under the shower or in the plunge until you are chilled until your skin is chilled then you go back into the sauna you don't sit around gassing or anything you go straight back into the sauna and you spend as long as you can until you feel quite uncomfortable you of course stay within safety margins you're not staying in there to the point of actually collapsing flat on the ground and then ending up like a piece of fried bacon. No, what you do is you go until you feel uncomfortable and then you go out and have another sauna. Uh, if necessary, have a drink. But one of the things that you're wanting to do is you're wanting to get your body used to being quite dehydrated. And one, uh, one thing to just bear in mind is that sure you sweat profusely when you're in a sauna, but look, it's no more than a few cups of water at a time that you're losing. Uh, when you're out running, cycling and that, you've got airflow which uh, evaporates the sweat very quickly. So uh, while you may be sweating profusely while you're doing those exercises, it's uh, not quite so obvious as when you are in still air inside a sauna. So the water tends to accumulate when you're in a sauna on your skin. and it, So it looks like you're sweating a, um, a bucket load, but really it's only a few cups worth. And if you're not sure, then go and weigh yourself in between and you'll see that uh, you don't lose very much water at all when you're in a sauna. So you just keep oscillating that way. Initially you might find that your heat tolerance is very low, like maybe only 5 to 10 minutes per cycle depending upon the heat of the sauna and how well you're able to cool off in between uh, cycles. Um, as you, you begin to acclimatise, you'll notice this after probably about the 4th uh, or 5th uh, exposure, um, time that's uh, over a, it takes a good week or so to get up to there is you'll start noticing that your exercise tolerance uh, in the sauna begins to increase 
and you may even find that you can go for half an hour in uh, quite a high uh, heat uh, doing exercise uh, before you need to go out and cool down. Um, and of course this is a wonderful way to prepare for uh, doing something like running 10 to 15 kilometres in Vanuatu heat. So uh, teammates, all of those people who are doing the uh, Vanuatu run with me, uh, that is certainly one of the things you can do. And the other thing is, by being heat acclimatised, you will find that you will enjoy the holiday in Vanuatu much more instead of trying to find air-conditioned hideaways at every possible moment. So, uh, Wellington, yes, it is getting a bit chilly, and I believe Melbourne, where a couple of you are coming from, is probably even worse than Wellington, because Wellington actually is a very mild Mediterranean-type climate. Um, it does blow occasionally, and there is the occasional bit of rain, but hey, you know, you've got to take the good with the bad, and I'll tell you what, Wellington's a bloody good place to live. So, signing off, um, over and out, everybody, and get training, and enjoy that hearty sweat. Oh, and of course, what you do, I must just uh, finish by saying, of course, after you've finished your uh, run in the sauna, what you do is you calculate how much sweat you have lost by simply weighing, how it, weighing yourself. So if you've lost half a kilo, then you've lost half a litre of water. So it's a good idea to drink perhaps about three quarters of a litre of water over the next hour or so to just make sure that you're fully hydrated. Okay, over and out, and uh, get out there and pound those hills.